Hi, this is going to be part of my tool series, um, helping you all keep your shop maintained or saving your money on tools and showing you how to set stuff up. Now, there are three things I'm going to discuss today. First, how to make an outlet for your welder, a 220 outlet. This particular welder requires a 50 amp outlet, so therefore that's what I bought. Uh, there are different welders out there that require a 30 amp or what have you. Second thing I'll discuss is how to hook up your welder to a generator, to a slot plug, what to look for on that. And the third thing I always discuss is how to hook it up to your actual circuit board panel and which breakers to use and how to use that. Now, first thing you're gonna need is to buy the cable. The cable is several dollars a foot. You're gonna want copper. Aluminum can be used, but it should be avoided. Um, Copper is better. Second thing is you're going to need to buy a, for my welder I needed a 50 amp plug. So whatever your welder has, find this space and buy the plug. It's going to be $10, $12, maybe $15. And this is how you wire it up. Now the bare wire is a ground. It'll be marked with a green screw usually. In fact, 100% of the time I've ever seen it, it's always marked with a green screw. So the bare wire goes to the ground and then you tighten it down. The left and right, the white and black, it doesn't matter which one you use. They're both 110 volt legs and they will go to one or the other side and then the other side will go to its corresponding side and you will tighten them down in there when you strip a little bit of wire similar to this. Once you wire it all up, make sure it's tight so there's no continuity loss. Close it up and you will have a plug. You can use, you know, weatherproof connector or you could use the connector the plug comes with. Weatherproof connector is uh, several, se several dollars, but it, it helps a little bit with some dust. Obviously it doesn't make it waterproof, but it helps. Now, this is a twist lock plug. This particular one is a 20 amp because I have a 5k generator. There are bigger ones and they are not interchangeable, but they all work the same way. Again, the ground, this bare wire right here, will always go to the ground. This white wire right here, opposite of the ground, marked with a W, is neutral because these are originally designed to split into two 110 volt legs. They need a neutral. For your welder, however, you do not. As you can see, this is a three prong wire, not a four prong. So what happens is you use the green, the ground, and you use the Y and the X. So you would put your wire in there and tighten it down. If your generator is 5K, 6K, 7K, usually it's going to be a bigger plug, so you're going to have room to put your wire in there. Plus, this one's a little bit flat from putting it in the control panel several times over. So, that's how you wire up your plug to be able to use this as an extension cord for a generator. If you have a generator big enough to support your welder. Alright, like I said, the third thing I'll discuss is how to hook up your plug to a circuit breaker to use your plug. Now, this right here is my range. Um, this is how I temporarily hook up my welder, use it, and then disconnect it and hook up my range back up so that I'm not making any permanent modif modifications to my rental because I'll be leaving here in several months and I don't wanna, you know, hook them up with a free 220 plug, nor do I wanna have them complain about it because it's not part of my lease agreement. So what you do, Turn the breaker off. Or if you're buying a new breaker, it's already going to be, well, just make sure it's off. When it's off, it is safe to do this. Right now, my range is disconnected. And this is what I have. I have a 50 amp breaker. You're going to need at least a 20 amp, 30 amp, depending on your welder. So like I said, it doesn't matter which one goes in first, you put them in and you tighten them with a good flat blade screwdriver. You put the other one in and you tighten it down with a good flat blade screwdriver. And now you have your ground. The circuit panels always have a ground bar on the left or the right 
Not to be confused with the neutral bar right here. Do not put your ground into the neutral. Although, in many instances, the neutral is connected to the ground, but the ground is what you're gonna need. So avoid the neutral, you don't need that. So, also, the circuit panel is hot. I have not disconnected the main power. And so just be careful, don't fry yourself. Because unlike your regular plugs, this is all 220. And 200 amp breaker. So now you have the breaker, make sure it stays off. You have your ground connected and you can install your breaker itself. See the way it works is, see the left is one leg, the right is another leg, and as you can see they alternate. What makes this a 220 breaker is that it uses both legs. And upon flipping the breaker my welder is now ready to be used. Well there you have it. That's how you plug in a welder, that's how you use it as an extension cord, how you use it with your generator, and how you wire it up to your circuit board. Hope you all enjoyed the video, or at least found it useful. And uh, subscribe for more, and follow our adventures. We're building a charger, a 67 Tempest, we drive a 68 Firebird every day. We're also building a 67 Shelby, you know, GT500 clone, and there's a lot of fun stuff going on, on our channel, so make sure to subscribe and stay updated.